through the hands of those who dedicate their lives to creating remarkable food, I offer you a mouth-on approach to Quebec City's culinary culture. I'm taking you on an insider's tour of local-friendly places that fuel my passion for Quebec City's gastronomy. Whether you're looking for a place to eat, drink, or simply relax next to a warm cup of coffee, I've got you covered. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final episode of A Foodie Guide to Quebec City, second season. We are visiting the most tourist-friendly neighborhood of Quebec City, Vieux Quebec, and we kick things off with the grandiose, the magical, the spectacular Chateau Frontenac. Overlooking Le Fleuve Saint-Laurent, the prestigious St. Lawrence River, is the world's most photographed hotel, Chateau Frontenac, celebrating its 125th anniversary. Chateau Frontenac dominates Cap Diamant and extends along Terrasse du Frein, a 671-meter-long wooden boardwalk offering a breathtaking view of the magnificence of Fleuve Saint-Laurent. You'll feel like you're walking in a history class, specifically the chapter about the English dominating the railway across Canada. But let's look beyond its historical figure and dive right into the Chateau story with Maxime Aubin. Maxime, thank you so much for taking some time for me welcome. today. You're most welcome. Welcome to the Chateau. Yes, I feel like a powerful princess. Yes, of course, especially <laughs> in this beautiful uh, pink room, the yeah. Salon Rose, yeah. uh, in 1943 and 44. Uh, Roosevelt, Churchill and uh, Mackenzie King from Canada, they met in this room. Yeah. And the first time they were discussing about the Normandy landings. So we can say that uh, this room and this hotel is important for peace in the world. Yeah. Mm. A lot of people think that it's just a castle, no. but no, it is a hotel. It was built as a, a hotel from the beginning, mm -hmm. actually. It was built by Canadian Pacific Railway, uh, so it was uh, part of this series of chateau-style hotel across Canada. The original architect, they drew their inspiration from the chateau uh, from the Loire Valley in France, mm -hmm. a little bit also from Scotland, so it really is a mix of different influences. French and English. French and English, again. again. So the two powers <laughs> reigned over Quebec City over yeah. time. We are still very respectful of the past of the hotel, of the history. For example, at the Sam, if you pay attention, you will see many details in the decor that are inspired by a train. So mm -hmm. modern offering with still uh, elements from the past. We, as citizens of Quebec, we own the Chateau Frontenac. Yes, yeah, so exactly. People uh, want to know what's going on at the Chateau. Mm -hmm. They feel very engaged with us. And it's, uh, of course, a pleasure for us to, to share that, uh, that love of the Chateau. So, mm -hmm. uh, and it travels across the world, of course. It yes. is, and listen to this, it is the world's most photographed hotel. Yes, and I, I think it's easy to believe, especially with the social medias today. Yeah. I have uh, someone in my team who's taking care of uh, social medias, and uh, you can tell uh, that uh, she has a lot of pictures to like yeah. every morning. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot, a lot of people yeah. uh, wanting to, uh, to capture Quebec City and the Chateau Frontenac. Maxime, the Chateau is much more than just a hotel. There are yes. many, many food-related experiences here Yes, at the actually Chateau. the history of the hotel is very much linked to gastronomy because since the beginning it was important for the wealthy travelers to eat very well. We have a collection of old menus and when you look at the, those old menus, really? we see how important the terroir was even at the beginning, at the opening of the Chateau. So we see on the old menus the trout from the Gaspésie and the turkey from uh, Valcartier and things like that. So it really is very important to source locally the ingredients. Uh, it's really uh, not something new or something only a trend. It's really a part of uh, who we are at the Chateau. Mm -hmm. Maxim, thank you so much for this You're beautiful most welcome. history. You can uh, come anytime you want and I it's will. always a pleasure. Yes, <laughs> come on. Frédéric, thank you so much for taking the time to sit with me this afternoon. I know it's a hectic day. You're a very, very busy man, but I appreciate that you're sitting at your table. Yeah. When was the last I time you sat? I appreciate the invitation also. <laughs> well, when was the last time you sat here? 
almost that thing six months ago. Yeah? Yeah, we don't eat? sit a lot here. We, no? We're here for running. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel that myself, as a local from Quebec City, and tourists visit, visiting from all over the world, I sense there is this magical feeling around Le Chateau. Yeah. Around the Champlain, around the kitchen of the Chateau. How do you feel about it? Uh, you know, it's a legendary hotel. When you start to work at Le Chateau, you realize how much it's a professional environment. Yeah. You know, you lose the feeling of the picture or the postcard because yeah. it's a really busy hotel. Mm -hmm. It's not just a historical building and everything, but it's also a true living place where you can eat good food oh. with the trends of today. We do almost 400,000 mm -hmm. meals a year at Le Chateau. That's wow. something like, you know, Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. It's impressive when you come to think that you look at a plate, you look at the menu, there are artisans everywhere. Yeah. You walk into the Champlain, the first thing you notice to your left is the cheese cellar. It's all Quebec cheese. Your relationship with artisans is truly important in the work that you do on the menu. But you know, you build those relationships one-on-one -on -one with them. We use different artisans at different levels from different parts of Canada. Location, yeah. Mm -hmm. But a lot are from Quebec. Like in the summertime with the fresh vegetable and everything, it's like 85% of our things are from yeah. Quebec. And I'm thinking that when you knock on the door of an artisan and you call and you say, hey, I'm Frédéric Sir from the Chateau Frontenac, you make their year. And what is fun is we are in a position to give him the little support he needs to get just a little bigger and to support a little staff, to support a little distribution. We are partner with them. You develop products with them as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, sometimes completely. We have special event. We say, okay, we need a special cheese for this event. But you know, it's easy because we sit now in the veranda at Le Chateau. Yeah. And outside we see the bridge of Ile d'Orléans. Yeah where we got all the small fruit, some cheese from there, some poultry. Just after Ile d'Orléans, you have Ile Gru, a small island with 200 people and a cheese maker. Mm -hmm. And we take a part of cheese from there. We are like surrounded. We are in the middle of the road yeah. of all those wonderful farmers and everything around Quebec. How do we live in old Quebec? It's still a place with a lot of good restaurants. Sometimes, you know, we don't visit much each other. You have a lot of tourists also. That's funny because you get this big clash of <laughs> crowded street, but you have good place to have just a coffee, mm -hmm. the, all the little snack and things like that. Yeah, a lot of different things. It's and, vibrant. Yeah. It's very vibrant. And it's beautiful. The chateau is like four or five ways to think about cooking. If you do a plate for the room service, you are more in a vision of comfort food. When you do a, a plate for people at Le Champlain, you want them in an experience going somewhere. Okay. In banquet, you need to be able to do 500 times the same plate with the same quality, or you're thinking about food is different. So and there is no one unique experience. experience. They're just small, different experiences depending on what you're looking and for. And it's never boring. And you're speaking to people who come from all over the world. How are you able, through the food, through your creativity, and through the, the products that come from artisans, speak to everyone at once? We always ask ourselves, what I want to serve to friends and family who we come to visit. And if we got those things on board, that's yeah. because we are pretty close of what we like and what we, we love, love yeah. to share. You're so passionate, Frédéric. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see huh? you too. We should do this more often. Yeah. We should sit at this table more and often. And come to visit us in Quebec. Absolutely. Voilà. <laughs> Let's walk along the crisscrossing streets of old Quebec, where you'll witness the city's European cachet. It's like walking in a fortified colonial city of the early 17th century, 
Oh, oh wait, it actually is. <laughs> Founded by French explorer Samuel de Champlain in 1608, Old Quebec was designated World Heritage Treasure by UNESCO. Legally protected under the province's Cultural Property Act, buildings are preserved, making it a unique testament of Quebec's past. Don't forget to look down, too, because there are discoveries to be made, like here, for example, along Rue Saint-Louis. Can you tell what this is? Yeah, that's right, it's a cannonball. How do you think it made its way here? Further down Rue Saint-Jean, Le Tournebroche restaurant sources all of its ingredients locally, with most of them being organic. In the summertime, they have a rooftop garden and hives. Expect a menu filled with authentic Québécois specialties revisited by French chef Stéphane Roth with a modern twist. Let's meet him, but before, let's talk with owner Justin Keating. Justin, thank you so much for taking some time with me this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank you. What are some of the challenges for a restaurant owner uh, that runs a business that's located inside a UNESCO World Heritage Site? Because it's a heritage site, anything you do exterior is controlled, um, which is great. We need that. But at the same time, if you need to make a decision that's better for the business, it won't fly if it's not exactly in line with what they want. For example, if we need to change a window, yeah. enlarge in a door for better traffic flow, the answer generally has been no. So we have to work with that. At the same time, there's great advantages because of all the tourism that's attracted here. Um, that also has its challenges because it's so seasonal that we'll go from being very quiet to extremely busy. It's a very tourist-friendly neighborhood. Yeah. So how do you ensure that you're able to run your place year-round and that you speak to the local population? Because that's what's going to keep you alive. Yes. For us, it really comes down to uh, the personal contacts, like the service, um, our staff, you know, they come in here regularly and the staff builds a relationship with people. I mean, that's what I had with the restaurant was here before. Uh, mm -hmm. I came all the time because it felt like a second home. A lot of it, I feel, is time. Mm -hmm. And you just become part of the, part of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. What our viewers need to know is that this place here has the highest ratio of restaurant to people in all of North America, actually, more than New York. So it's hard for a restaurant owner to stand out of the lot, especially here in Old Quebec. But I think you do it well in a sense that you promote values that are not common to everyone around here. Yeah, well, we're really lucky. The thing about Quebec is I moved from Toronto. When I left, it took an hour to get to the country, whereas here in 20 minutes, you're in farms. Yeah. So the farm-to-table movement in Quebec is natural because there are so many farms so close to the actual restaurant. It's really, we're really lucky. When we started here, uh, that was one of the things that Stefan and Guy really wanted to push because they already had a relationship with a lot of farmers. Um, and then we started switching to farmers who are also are, are growing organically, which is becoming more and more popular. Yeah. Uh, more and more popular with people in the neighborhood too, the people that the tourists look for that. One way that you stand out as well, another way I should say that you stand out, is from the hives that you have on your garden. So when we did our gardens, the roof, we put in gardens all over the place, is that I actually made sure that it was actually pollinator-friendly gardens also for the bourdon and the gap, the wasps and all yeah, that, yeah. Um, which is really nice to see because they actually, uh, they, they, they live beside each other. The wasp will attack the honeybees. It's a, it's a challenge constantly. And it was a it. challenge this summer, especially for the yeah, wasps. We, uh, Cause we, it was hot here. Yeah, uh, Quebec and Ontario, we lost about 66% of the hives across uh, the Eastern coast. Uh, just, I think it was a six month winter, Varroa. The pesticide use now. That's a one thing about having bees in the city was so great is that there's very little pesticide use compared to the countryside. It's, a, it's an issue that we need to talk more and more about the use of pesticides and the fact that they are straight up killing the bees, which yeah. is our biodiversity, which is our food, which is what we eat in order yeah. to stay alive. I appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting a little hungry. I'd All like right. to talk with Stefan right. in the kitchen here, just so. to see how much of that farm-to-table philosophy is, is working out and how uh, tasteful it actually is. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks.
Stefan, thank you for taking some time for me today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I think this illustrates perfectly your farm to table philosophy. Yes, we have around 20 uh, beehives. So we're using the honey uh, that we produce ourselves like a substitute for regular sugar. It's incredibly of, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, and it's uh, fascinating. We collect this one maybe one month ago. How is it important for you to have that relationship with the farmers, with the producers who are not even 20, 40 kilometers away from here? Yeah, this is, this is a goal for us to try to pick up our products not far from 50 kilometers maximum. Wow. Sometimes we need to go a little bit further, but we don't go to Europe or everything else. We, can, we like to stay in Quebec. And uh, we have a good relationship with the farmers because we're working very close. We're going to the farm, check with them the vegetables. We make sure that they're uh, raised properly, all the meat. So, ah, we are so you very check close. as well for yeah. the, the animal well-being yeah. as well as the quality. Yes, of, oh, of course. That's interesting. Yeah. The past 20 years, we have a big improvement uh, of the local products, mm -hmm. and we have more and more products, different products. So we get the, the roots of the French cuisine and the base of the French cuisine, but it changed a lot, and it's a mix of the local Quebecois cuisine mixed with the root French yeah. uh, technique and using the local products, so that's make a good mix. You're deconstructing what the meal is traditionally like, yeah. and you're giving it a modern twist using your French techniques. Yeah. If you had to choose one dish in particular that you feel truly represents the essence of your cooking and the essence of Le Tournebroche, what would it be? It's going to be the food bio, it's a sharing plate, and it's like a big sample of everything. We have uh, some cretons, it's a local uh, chicken creton with organic chicken from Charlevoix. We have also a wild boar rillette, rillette and the wild boar is coming from saint augustin de Demor. it's something like 20 minutes from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything is on main on this plate, and almost everything is organic and local. Old Quebec is not just a living museum. There is life beyond tourism. The Morin Centre and La Maison de la Littérature are great examples. The Morin Centre is a leading English-language cultural centre housing the city's oldest library that dates back to 1824. You must have a visit. Its imposing wooden structures and Victorian decor will definitely charm you. In the early 1800s, the building served as a prison. Then it was transformed into Quebec City's first English-language institute of higher education. Next to it is La Maison de la Littérature. It offers a more modern environment to celebrate our culture. It's a place of creation, animation and diffusion dedicated to literature and writing. Here is where you should plan some extra time, some extra exploring time. The flavors you'll find at Épicerie Couillard et Fils will literally take you across the province. Let's meet with the owner. Marc-Antoine, I love your place. Thank you. It's like traveling across Quebec where you're highlighting artisans. Yes, my dream was to have some business in uh, Quebec City and, and live in it. Mm -hmm. So it's my first retail store. So wow. it's like my dream come true and I wanted to celebrate the local producer, uh, Quebec City producer. Mm -hmm. And while doing this, uh, we discovered so many great products. Yeah, what you're doing is you're celebrating yes. art. Exactly. True pure laine Quebec yes. art. It's like uh, sometimes I call it uh, a mission because uh, you kind of have to be, uh, if I may, rich to do that because yeah. I have to buy everything and uh, it's kind of expensive. And congratulations to you, you for choosing to do that. Yes. Because it takes businessmen like yourself yes. in order to take the risk. Exactly. It's hard. It's not something that's easy. You need to entertain that relationship with the yes. artisans, but we need that exposure. Yes, we're all re also the only one that with this kind of retail store in the old city. But I think it's uh, we're witnessing right now how yes. important it is. Yes. Because when we travel, yes. we want to discover places exactly. by, by way of, of artisans and by way of the food. Exactly. Obviously. Exactly. 
And I, well, as you can see, it's even it's raining. There's no one outside, but it's still in here and yeah. it's growing and growing yeah. and growing. Because it's a very tourist neighborhood. Exactly. But there are not only tourists in this neighborhood. No. There's a lot of local people. Exactly. How do they help themselves in your store? Well, I know everyone that's working just beside that ch yeah. Chateau Frontenac. <laughs> they all come to us and uh, when they have the gift to do, they come to us. Yes. And I would be in a neighborhood, in a um, suburb. Yeah. And the price would be the same. So mm -hmm. You want it to be accessible. Exactly. So you have the milk products, you have the eggs, you have the uh, the flour, you have those products that speak to the local people exactly. as well. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Yes. What if you had to pick one, maybe one or two products that you feel stand out or that you really appreciate? Well, my favorite one I can get you by, it's product from Maple, but I'll call fermentation yeah, yeah. from uh, Maple. Yeah. So they're a sparkling wine, uh, a wine, yeah. maple wine, and um, liquory wine. Ah, oh, the Chardonnay Robin. Yes. If you don't say to someone what it is, they will think it's a kind of port wine or something yeah. like yeah. this. But it's so refined, it's so, you just wouldn't believe. So the first thing is we can do alcohol with maple. And the second one, we have a wine. They also do a wine. Yeah, the so Minnesota. when you don't know it, you're kind of afraid because maple, it's maybe uh, yeah. too sweet or too, too much sugar in mm -hmm. it. No, no, it's dry and it's just excellent. Absolutely. So this is their new image and that was their old image. Yes, yes, And you know exactly. what, Marc-Antoine, I'm going to add on to that. If you were to choose only one product in this store, I would go with the Chalet yes, de Robin. absolutely. I think this truly represents the Quebecois. Exactly. And our traditions, our techniques, and the modern way exactly. of seeing, of, of taking a look of what our heritage is yes. and transforming it into the future. So do we cheers to that? Yes. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>Marie-Ève, thank you so much for taking some time for me today. I really appreciate it. Okay. I feel like I'm in a place where there's something stronger above me, something very spiritual to the Monastère des Augustines. How do you describe that? This place has been dedicated to healing, and caring, and generosity for nearly four centuries. The Monastère was founded in 1639 by the Augustinian sisters who came here with the mission of the king to heal the bodies and the souls oh. of the people of our country. So healing bodies and soul is the essence uh, of this place. We have several uh, programming and, and activities. Uh, we offer um, daily classes of yoga and meditation. Uh, silence is an important part of our proposal uh, to respond to that uh, quest for turning off the, the digital noise in, uh, in yeah. our society. Since our opening in 2015, we supported different programs. For example, uh, we are welcoming here family caregivers yes. who come on respite stays and stay with us three, four nights and, and recharge their batteries. Wow. We also provide with low-cost accommodation to the family of the sick who accompany a, a patient at the hospital next door. Mm -hmm. We have uh, retreats for the professionals of our healthcare system, our nurses, mm -hmm. our med uh, students yeah. as well. So we offer them a place to um, to share, to, to take care of themselves together. and Most and to, important, 
unplug. Yeah, as well, <laughs> as well. Marie-Ève, this is an authentic sister's room. Well, I should say a representation of an authentic sister's room. Guests can actually sleep here. Yes. I've, I've stayed here and it's breathtaking. It's poignant. I'll say it that way. It's truly amazing. We have 65 rooms in total at Le Monastère that are divided into two categories. So the authentic um, mostly welcome our travelers who are on a wellness journey. Yeah. We also have contemporary rooms uh, that were completely uh, rebuilt and that welcome a different type of travelers, mostly tourists that are uh, interested into culture, history, architecture. Mm -hmm. Le Monastère has received five green keys. Uh, this is the echo rating system of the Association of Hotels of Canada, and wow. we're only 20 properties across the country uh, to have achieved the five keys, and this is in recognition of our environmental engagement, uh, but also economic engagement. Yeah. So we have a local purchasing policy. Everything that you see that is not an artifact, because we recycle yeah. uh, the furniture <laughs> from the collection as well, uh, is handmade in, in Quebec by our local craftsmen. Marie-Ève, we're just steps from the restaurant already. I can smell the beauty of the food that's served here. Um, I think there is a true philosophy in the plate that represents the uh, Monastère des Augustines. Well, you won't be surprised if I tell you it's a, it's a healthy restaurant. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> We initiated last year the creation of a cooperative of solidarity that brings together uh, 45 different organic producers of the greater uh, Quebec area, mm -hmm. together with restaurants uh, of the old city. Uh, so it's another of our sustainable engagement. Uh, we help our local organic yeah. producer and it allows us to serve fresh, organic and uh, local delicacies mm -hmm. at, uh, at the restaurants. And a very sustainable philosophy behind that as well. It's a first actually, congratulations for that. Thank you. All our lucrative activities serve to finance our different programs and, and the social missions. So mm -hmm. um, the guests of Le Monastère become the, the engaged actors of a sustainable tourism experience. And that's quite unique uh, in the tourism landscape uh, oh, yeah. in, in Canada. Absolutely. Right in the heart of a World Heritage UNESCO site. Thank you so much, marie Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci. <laughs>Restaurant Le Saint-Amour is an icon of Quebec gastronomy, celebrating the local terroir with European charm for the past 40 years. Known for its duck foie gras, it's where tradition and innovation come together. It's also one of the best wine selections in Canada. Is it happy hour yet? Let's have a cocktail, shall we? Follow me to the trendy 1608 bar of the Chateau Frontenac. Maxim, thank Hello. you. I think you're it's gonna make today one of the Chateau Frontenac's classic cocktails. Yes, today uh, we will make uh, artisanal gin and tonic with a nice exclusive product from the uh, for the Chateau Frontenac. So uh, this tonic yes. was made just for the Chateau? Yes, it's the uh, Ars Tonic Syrup. So we uh, work with a local company. We put inside uh, different herbs, uh, spices, so it gives to the cocktail a more fresh taste 
fresh flavor. We use also uh, local gin. It's called. Oh, it's yellow from yeah. the herbs. From the herbs, from the Nordic uh, spice and herbs. So we will put uh, three quarter of the house tonic, uh, one ounce and half of the angava, the local gin. Juniper's berry. It's a kind of reminder of, the, of different ingredients uh, it composed the gin. It's very visual. Already yes. I can tell it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> we will put also uh, fresh citrus, a sparkling water, because the tonic is not sparkling. It's, very, it's a kind of yeah, syrup. It's, just it's just more syrup, concentrated. Right? Yeah, yeah. And we put a nice touch of fresh herbs, rosemary, thyme. So the final touch we will express a grapefruit zest. Grapefruit is another reminder of the tonic. It gives the bitter uh, flavor. And we put some star anise for the look and for another reminder of the gin ingredients. Look at that. That is such a beautiful cocktail. Yes, it's a pretty and healthy cocktail. And you know what? I don't think I have ever been served a cocktail so generous. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna smell everything. Yes. I smell the star anise, I smell the thyme, I smell the rosemary, and then the grapefruits. It's a kind of garden. It is, it's like glass. a garden cocktail. <laughs> okay, Enjoy, let's cheers. Go. Oh, wow. So it's this, really refreshing, this, tasty. This is so awesome. And that's what I like about the fact that you're using tonic syrup. Mm -hmm. You really, really taste the uh, the herbs that you mentioned yes. that are that are used in the creation of this cocktail it is flamboyant it is classic it represents us and it reminds me of the boreal forest wow my senses are all illuminated right now thank you very much maxim it was a pleasure all right cheers guys cheers is what ends A Foodie Guide to Quebec City, the second season with the Chateau Frontenac, the pillar, the icon of Quebec City. I sure hope you'll learn that even though we have the highest number of restaurants per people in all of North America, that our chefs truly have at heart the relationship they have with their artisans, and that farm to table is not just a trend, it's our way of life. Keep in mind, the adventure continues. Instagram, Facebook, and the website, foodiequebec.com. I'm Alison Van Rassel. Thank you for being with us.